I'm Emily Moschak, and you're listening to Tuned In to NoCo, Town Square Media show that lets you know what matters in NoCo. I'm talking today with Lydia Doty, the founder, and Elise Carver, the executive director for Hope Lives. And we're here today just to chat a little bit about Hope Lives and their impact during Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So thank you so much, ladies, for joining me. For our listeners who may be unfamiliar with Hope Lives, can you just describe to me what this organization is and how it came to be here in Northern Colorado? Well, sure. Hope Lives is celebrating its 20th anniversary this year, which I'm very proud of. And uh, we have Elise at the helm as uh, our executive director. And it was started when I was going through my journey with breast cancer. And that was in 2000 and 2001. And I had a real tough time with my treatment and I had a rough protocol. Um, And it was scary, very scary. Um, it, It strengthens strengthened my religious faith um, because I didn't know if I was going to survive or not. I had two daughters I was raising, so um, it was a tough time for them as well. Because I was exposed to and had the opportunity to benefit from Uh, complementary or integrative services while I was going through my treatment, my Western medicine, which we certainly support. Um, I looked around and I saw that many other women who were going through what I was going through while they were in the infusion um, room, I could see where they could really benefit from knowing about ways they could support their own body while they were going through this difficult treatment. And one day when I was on my balcony uh, reading some uplifting books, because I tried to keep really positive during the whole experience, my creator, my God said to me, Lydia, I want you to start something that will outlive you and that will help other women going through this journey. And I heard it loud as day, and I decided that I would be obedient to that thought and that message, that direction, and I started doing what I needed to do to start a nonprofit. Mind you, I'd never started a nonprofit before, so it was um, it was kind of going in the blind, just using my common business sense. I called my accountant, I called my attorney, I, I just started the process, and I was successful to put together a 501c3 and um, I don't know, people were very generous and, and I was able to get the organization rolling to start treatment for women that next January. So January, 2002, we actually started providing free services And it was all based on integrative services, complementary care, those services that probably women women wouldn't help, you know, wouldn't uh, give themselves because insurance wouldn't cover them. And we thought, I thought they were very, very important. Uh, Services that support the body, um, whether that's uh, controlling lymphedema in their arm with therapeutic lymphedema massage or, Healing touch, which gives them a real positive, strong commitment to live and to conquer the disease. Reiki, massage, um, wigs, uh, prosthesis, uh, exercise, nutrition counseling, psychological counseling, just a whole array of things to help the woman get through her, her journey. And as of today, I think we have Um, in excess of 60 women who are actively receiving services from our organization. So I'm I'm very proud of that fact. It's been a long journey in that we are totally supported by donations, by any grant that we might get, by um, 
sponsors, by events that we do, by businesses who will do events in their own business to support us. So it's, you know, it's a constant effort to get the community to to help us provide these free services. Elise, would you be able to tell me a little bit about you and how you found your role at Hope Lives? Sure. I was uh, I was essentially left a, a, a corporate career down in Denver for many, many years in uh, 2018 because my heart had been tugging uh, at me that there in this next season of my life, there was something else I needed to be doing with, with giving back as, as well. I'd been a volunteer my whole life and uh, I had the opportunity to, to move up to Northern Colorado. I'm a UNC uh, grad, go bears, but I had been down in Denver for a, a number of years and I was given the opportunity to, to first come up and, and to work for Pathways Hospice. That's what brought me back in the in the area. And that's how I kind of um, began my my nonprofit career. And and uh, last year I had the wonderful opportunity and blessing to come on with Hope Lives. And I think it's been just a tremendous experience for me in so many ways, you know, living down in Aurora, I never really appreciated local so much as I do now. I, we are, as Lydia said, a hundred percent relying on community support. We're also very proud to say that all of the money stays here in our community to help out our folks in their breast cancer journeys. And it's made me also realize just what a generous and loving community this is and how we want to be good stewards and good community members and support other nonprofits and other businesses. And, and truly what it comes down to is, is, is just trying to do what we can to help our neighbors in their breast cancer journeys and to feel a little bit better and to get them back to their, to their loved ones and their lives and, and uh, that they had previously. And, and um, it's just been such a, a pleasure and such a great move for me. And I'm just very passionate and committed and, and believe fully in our mission. And um, it's, it's just been a great opportunity for for me in so many ways. And I'm very grateful for it. Yeah, it's so great to hear about that community aspect. And now we're kind of coming up on the final weeks of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. What do you think our listeners need to be more aware of when it comes to breast cancer? You know, 42,000 women will die of breast cancer this year in the United States. And um, although we are continually improving treatment and um, creating more drugs, better ways to combat the disease, Hopefully, it will just become a chronic situation down the road. But um, women need to know that they have to be really mindful of their bodies and really aware of their bodies. I think uh, they can't just overlook doing a mammogram. They need to do self-exams. It's very, very important that they are aware of their bodies. And even if they have a negative mammogram, to, to know that um, they back that up with self-exams because not always are those mammograms correct. Also, and Elise can elaborate on this, we are seeing more and more younger women diagnosed with breast cancer. And I don't know if there's more because that's more awareness or we're putting more pesticides into our bodies or what is causing that. But it's really tragic to see a, a young 30 plus woman with a young family having to go through this. So um, at least maybe you have some more thoughts on that. I think you did a great job, Lydia, and I would agree just looking at our uh, clientele, uh, current client database that absolutely, I mean, it, it runs the gamut um, from various ra age ranges from probably, I don't have it right up in front of me, but 30-ish all the way up to, I just onboarded someone recently who's 89. Um, so it, it definitely does run the gamut, but I would agree that uh, what Lydia said, it it, it is scary to think that it's, um, you know, a lot of younger gals is, as well. And I, I think, especially with Lydia's own personal experience, I, I, I think she's done a great job with, 
with um, stating all that. I guess the only other thought I would have based on my experience with just being in this role for uh, since last year is just advocating not only for mammograms and everything that you said, Lydia, but then, you know, as women, I think especially um, we can be kind of guilty of taking care of everybody else first. And so I think I would elaborate by just saying, you know, Lydia's got so many great um, preventative options that if that if you do get this diagnosis or anyone that you know does, we are here to help. None of it matters about uh, any of the rest of it, as long as they live or are seeking treatment and are 18 years of age or older, we want to be here to row in with them and to to support and to give um, them some uh, motivation for self-care now. And um, we just, I just would really like to make sure that folks know that we're always available and here to help however we can. I might just add, um, last week, you uh, signed up a Spanish-speaking woman who couldn't even speak English. That's true. Oh, I, uh, I, struggled, I struggled a bit with my broken Spanish. I wasn't expecting to do that, but we got through it. Yes, we, we got through it. It was a referral from the hospital, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, we do get referrals from the hospitals because they do uh, feel that we are a very credible organization that supports women. And I might add, when we talk about this area, we we provide services for women who are being treated in Larimer and Weld County. So we embrace quite a large geographic area um, and are very pleased to help women in this area. Absolutely. That is awesome. And for our listeners out there who might be dealing with this themselves, what is the best way for them to get in touch with you? I would suggest that you go onto our website, hopelives.org. We will be happy to talk further, answer any questions, um, get you onboarded and, and get some services and some support started for you. Great. And now... In each of your times, I mean, Lydia, clearly you started Hope Lives, but as even you, Elise, with how long you've been with Hope Lives, do you have any specific stories or moments from clients you've worked with that have just really stuck out with you over the years? Well, of course, the difficult ones come to mind right away. We had a young woman who was stage one, and you would think that would be a piece of cake and would be clearly um, easy to not cure, but to get her into remission that would last a lifetime. Well, lo and behold, a few years later, the um, it came back. And unfortunately, when it came back, it came roaring back. And a young woman with two children, um, I attended her funeral. I remember all of these cases, cases such as uh, a daughter being diagnosed and not the mother. And then within a couple of years, the mother's diagnosed, which is just kind of a quirky, quirky situation. Um, yeah, there are, I've been to too many funerals, but it is hopeful if you take action when you are diagnosed and you don't ignore it. Some people, I think, like Elise was saying, think, oh, gee, if I ignore it, it'll go away. I'm not in pain. It doesn't hurt. Um, You need to pay attention. It's a serious diagnosis. And we're there to support you, to have a mentor you can talk to if you wish, provide you services, provide you comfort to know that um, this is a, a sisterhood and the sisterhood supports others, other women going through it. Um, We have situations where there are a lot of positive things happening too. Um, A gal, local gal, that's just a delightful gal that I know um, was diagnosed in California, had a mastectomy on one side and lo and behold moved here and it, it attacked the other side. So she had to go through the process all over again. And um, so you've got to be, pay attention to it. It's, it's serious, but it's not, um, it's still hopeful. So here I sit, I was diagnosed in November of 2000 and I'm fine and I'm healthy. And uh, 
I, I was able to raise my two daughters and um, try to help other women now. I think that that's great. And that the, the only story I'll share is it's not even from a, a, a client per se, um, but uh, it was recent. And so I was, I had given a, a, a small presentation at a networking event, a women's networking event about us. And a gal came up to me afterwards and she said, I just moved here. I don't remember from where. And, and she, she mentioned having cancer. It was not breast cancer. And she really didn't even specify what it was, but she said, you know, I would have really appreciated having these services from wherever she just lived. And she said, in, in particular, she said, you know, I've, I had heard that maybe acupuncture would help, or I'd heard that other things might help, but you don't want to spend one extra dime on yourself right now, A, and B, especially on something that you are not guaranteed may or may not help. And to just be able to have this opportunity to be able to it, it, try some of these other mod modalities and not feel that additional burden of you're taking anything away from your family and you can just try some of this stuff and see if it helps you make, uh, makes, makes you feel better. And I was, I, I thought that was really profound and I've, I've shared that a few times since. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing those with me. And I want to thank you both for taking the time to talk with me today. I think our listeners will be really happy to hear about this information is there anything else that you feel like we maybe missed or that you'd like listeners to know? You know, with Breast Cancer Awareness Month being October, we are um, focused on fundraising this month. Fort Collins Jeep is uh, donating $100 for every Jeep sold in October. And so if you're on the fence, buy it in October. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so we are out there um, planning also a February gala, which we're bringing back since we had to cancel it in uh, the past couple of years because of COVID. And in March, we're going to be doing a bolathon to raise funds. And of course, there's always end of year giving. So we, we have uh, several possibilities as to how you can give easily whether it's a, a small monthly amount or end of the year donation, we'd love any support. I just think that, um, and thank you for plugging all those great events, um, Lydia. I just think that I would end it with, if there's some way that you would like to give back to us or to your your community and their breast cancer journeys, we'll find a way to, to, to make that happen, right? The whole... Um, uh, analogy of time, talent, or treasure. So if, if volunteering for an event or maybe in our office, or you've got previous grant writing experience or fundraising or marketing experience or interests, let alone if you'd like to give financial donations, um, you know, all of it is so valuable and so important. We're a small 100% local um, breast cancer nonprofit. And, um, you know, it really is a grassroots very community-based organization. And there's a there's a spot for you, or at least a conversation that can be had if there's maybe some other ways that kind of uh, maybe strike a chord more with you. Thank you again so much, ladies. I appreciate you taking the time. Thank, Thank you, you, Emily. Again, that was Lydia Doty and Elise Carver talking about Hope Lives for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. You can learn more at hopelives.org. 